Did you know that the current CO2 concentration in the Earth's atmosphere has peaked in the last million years? A further increase in these indicators will lead to irreversible processes on our planet, perhaps fatal to humans. How about turning one of the main dangers of our time into a relatively cheap source of energy that can make a huge contribution to the conquest of the solar system? Hello and welcome to Innovative Techs. Today, you will find out how CO2 can become the engine of space travel and save our planet from destruction. When people first realized the full potential of fossil resources, they began actively utilizing the wealth hidden in the Earth. With the development of technologies for oil and gas production, the industry also received a powerful impetus for development. The result of this selfless passion for minerals has caused the rapid increase in carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. The state of affairs is exacerbated by the rapid growth of the global car fleet, which has grown from a few dozen cars in the 1880s to 1.2 billion vehicles by 2020. Additionally, the transportation industry is the leader in air pollution and harmful emissions. It accounts for over 17% of global greenhouse gas pollution. The burning of oil, gas and coal, along with increasing deforestation, is the cornerstone of the CO2 problem. The concentration of substances harmful to people is growing and over time can lead to an inglorious end to our history. It's a shame, agree? We have a good chance not only to permanently solve the problem of the catastrophic accumulation of carbon dioxide, but also to make a breakthrough with it. This will allow us to explore the most remote corners of the solar system in the coming decades. The first step in tackling the fundamental CO2 threat is reducing emissions, and more importantly, developing technologies to capture and store harmful emissions. Scientists from dozens of countries are working on their implementation, and the first projects under the abbreviation CCS, Carbon Capture and Storage, date back to the early 2000s. By the beginning of last year, there were 21 factories all around the world, which are testing various technologies for capturing CO2. A dozen more different projects are under construction and development. These structures point-wise collect harmful emissions at large industrial facilities, such as cement plants, power plants, etc. Then, carbon dioxide either goes underground for geological storage or is pumped into wells with black gold to increase oil recovery. In some cases, it is also used for the production of synthetic fuels and coal gasification. The most striking examples of such facilities are the Petra Nova Power Plant located in Texas, the Quimper Power Plant, Mississippi, the Longship Carbon Capture and Storage Project, Norway, the Quest Carbon Capture and Storage CCS Facility, Canada. These projects, like most of the existing technologies to fighting the growth of CO2 concentration, have two things in common. First, they do not solve the problem of the final processing of carbon dioxide. In the case of enhanced oil recovery, this substance is used to extract black gold, which when burned emits the same CO2. As a result, there is no need to talk about carbon-neutral technology. When we send substances harmful to the atmosphere for storage underground, we face serious risks in the event of a leak. Practice shows that banal burial of emissions does not solve the problem and, sooner or later, leads to disaster. The second common feature is the commercial failure of existing carbon capture projects. Huge amounts of money have been invested in these mega-projects. The aforementioned objects received investments, the total volume of which exceeds $10 billion. In fact, it turned out that the operation of the Petronova power plant is unprofitable when oil prices are below $65 per barrel. As for the Kemper Energy Facility, despite its enormous cost, the process of capturing carbon with further coal gasification was never launched. And if, in the case of enhanced oil recovery, there is any chance of commercial benefit, underground storage of carbon dioxide, even theoretically, will not be profitable until humanity learns to efficiently recycle it. And this is where Mr. Elon Musk enters the arena. 
In January 2021, the renowned innovator announced that it would provide $100 million for the best carbon capture projects. Submission period for the competition starts on April 22nd, and the first three prizes will receive 50, 20, and 10 million respectively. The rest of the money will be distributed among other worthy applicants. The famous businessman's statements made a lot of noise and made many people wonder why Musk needs CO2 capture technologies. The answer was received quickly enough, as at about the same time it became known that SpaceX would be producing methane near its launch site on Boca Chica. This gas is one of the key fuel components for the new Raptor engine, which is to send the Starship spacecraft to Mars. But what does carbon dioxide have to do with it, you ask? The fact is that the Red Planet has huge reserves of CO2, and with the help of relatively simple processing technologies, methane can be obtained from it. We have a separate video about this which we recommend that you watch. However, back to Earth. Among the projects that can take part in the upcoming competition, there are really interesting and original ideas. For instance, the carbon capture technologies developed by Houston-based company Semvita Energy. The engineers here are using genetically modified microorganisms that can transform the structure of carbon dioxide into 30 different molecular compounds. Initially, the company was working on a project in which the trapped harmful substances were converted into sugar. Yes, you heard that right, sugar. When this goal was achieved, it became clear that a CO2 bioreactor was capable of producing a lot of useful compounds. These could be proteins and vitamins for astronauts, or in the case of SpaceX, components for producing methane and oxygen. According to the statements of the general director of Semvita Energy, they are ready to apply for participation in the competition and are confident that their project will beneficially complement the capabilities of the space company Elon Musk. Another potential participant is a group of engineers from Occidental Petroleum Company. The oil company plans to build a new plant in southeastern United States that will redefine industrial mining operations. It will host the world's largest direct CO2 capture or DAC plant. The plant is designed to capture a million tons of greenhouse gas annually. This is equivalent to the annual emissions of 215,000 cars with internal combustion engines. The company states it plans to significantly reduce its oil and gas operations in the future focusing on managing CO2 emissions. According to local experts, this industry will bring the corporation billions of dollars in the future. These are just a couple of interesting examples. The majority of applicants will appear closer to the summer when the competition is in full swing. If we do not take into account the classic CCS projects, then at the bottom line, we will see that carbon capture technologies on our planet have yet to take a decisive step. Many of the ideas proposed by activists are far from reality and only work in theory. For example, giant airships that filter air masses in regions with a high concentration of harmful substances, or even outdoor filters for capturing carbon dioxide. It is for this reason that Elon Musk is trying to revolutionize not only private astronautics and transportation, but also CO2 processing. The entrepreneur himself called this venture carbon negativity. To begin with, scientists must come up with and implement a technology that allows them to capture about one ton of carbon dioxide from the air every day. At the same time, the project must be able to scale economically. The ultimate goal is to remove 10 billion tons of CO2 from the atmosphere annually by 2050. It's an approximate date by which Musk is eager to mass-produce Starship and launch regular flights to Mars. Obviously, both components are part of SpaceX's master plan to conquer outer space and transform humanity into a multi-planetary species. Well, how long do you think it will take for scientists to develop an efficient technology for capturing CO2 and further recycling it? Will they manage to achieve their goal within five years, for which the Elon Musk competition is designed? Share your opinion in the comments under this video. Don't forget to press thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and join the innovative text community. See you soon, take care.